And hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are back inside of Minecraft and we are playing another parkour map. This is one by Jera. It's called Escalation, I believe. Basically, how this map works is there's five sections, um, worlds, I guess we could just call them for the sake of ease. There are five worlds and we have to parkour through each of them to reach the end. Now, I, 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 I do know the beginning section of this map and actually a little bit through the first three worlds just because I tried to record this a couple times and didn't exactly um, go the best. One problem appeared after another and now I'm having to re-record it. Basically I'm not going to bother to get into the details but you know problems with actual recording, problem with microphone, problem with getting interrupted etc. So yeah, just multiple different things all came together and led to me having to restart, which is fine. It is what it is. Now, this is a map that's based around the idea of speedrunning. Now, I'm not going to bother to actually speedrun it. Just, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to do the map and have a good time, you know. Ow. Just kind of not stress it, especially since you know I just got finished, you know, doing some other slightly more stressful things today. Like for example, um, today was a game for my CG sports team, which I participate in, and yeah, we did we did end up winning. Woo! Very exciting. Um, like, it, it, it was a bit stressful for me from the standpoint of I wasn't originally supposed to play this game, but when the guys showed up late to uh, mandatory pregame practice and I was there, so they went, all right, you're in. <laughs> Which, you know, is what it is. I feel a little bad that that's, you know, the reason I got to start, but I I do appreciate that that's the way it's, it's set up because it does require you to actually slightly care if you're going to be on the team and he, he had circumstances outside of his control which led to not being able to make it so it's like you know in, in this case you know I feel bad for him but like for the most part it's a good rule from the standpoint of like you know if you don't want to show up to practice somebody else gets to take your spot <laughs> so yeah so yeah, as a result, due to that, I got the chance to play, which I did, an, I did an all right job. I didn't do like fantastic or anything, but I did do all right. Oh, another point on this map. There is, in each world, um, there is a secret teleporter, which will let you skip some levels in the map, which, you know, is a thing. I found the one in stage three, but I'm not sure where the one is in, say, stage two, for example. I have no clue where the one here is at. And frankly, I don't even remember where the one in stage three is at, if I'm being honest. It kind of took me off guard when I found it. I just remember I had to fall down a section to get there like I bet you the one in this map is probably like you know like back in that section or just you know a deal like that I don't think that's exactly where it's at but I bet you it's that s sort of positioning ah oh, man that's a tough spot to fall the interesting thing about this map is the map creator specifically like made it as a speedrun map but as far as I can tell there's no like actual leaderboards or anything for it which makes it essentially not able to <laughs> be that good of a speedrun map just from the standpoint of it's hard to compare your scores against other people but you know the thoughts there for sure so like it, it it's designed with that in mind trying to make it so that you know if you take certain paths, you can cut time and 
go a bit faster. All that. Okay. Ah. Okay. Bam. Bam. Don't hit your head. And away we go. Okay. Around here. Boom. Looking good, looking good. Feeling good about this. All is well. Okay, okay. Sorry if my commentary is dry. I was just really focused for that bit there. We're on to the next section, which I'm going a lot faster than I did my first time around since I kind of know the layout and stuff like that. Oh, whoops, don't know what I was doing there. And I believe... I don't know what I was doing there either. I'm just kind of jumping around without any thought in mind. Okay. Let's make that jump. Yeah. Now, the map creator did say that the map would take, I believe it's like 15 to 25 minutes if you play it casually. Now, as far as I can tell, it seems like that's a bit of a underestimation. S yeah. Underestimation. For your first run on the map like just assume it's probably gonna take you a bit longer than that I'm guessing what he did is he kind of went through the map without um, trying to speed run it and took the time he got and kind of judged from there if I had to guess um, all right But that's legit just a guess. I have no clue what he actually did. And maybe it's just a matter of the first time I went through, I was doing really bad. So, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure around here, I was already at, like, 500 seconds. So, like, 10 minutes or whatever. I don't know. As I said, it might just be me being bad at parkour. Whee. I hate hitting my head on these sort of jumps. Okay, now would be a horrible time to miss the jump. Good. I hate the fact that there's no checkpoint at this point, and you get this series of jumps past it. Oh, uh, actually, I'm. I think I want to momentum that. Okay, cool, cool. That's the way to do it. Just one of those jumps that's easier if you pick up the momentum beforehand. Okay. That propelled me forward. Cactus jumps can still be weird. Like, for the most part, once you have them figured out, they're not really a problem. But every once in a while, like... <gasps> Are you kidding me? That's... Up. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's that, that's that's the sort of thing that makes me mad. Seriously, they have invisible blocks there to make you not take a slightly easier version of an already easy jump. Huh. I hate invisible blocks. I really wish map creators would chill out with the amount of invisible blocks they use in maps. Like, in, in a lot of cases... They're useful and necessary to the way a map works. But there's some times where it's just like, you didn't really need to do that. Like, it feels like you just kind of did it to do it. And I also get that for a map like this that's based around speedrunning, that you would be... Oh. oh, I don't know what I was doing there. You'd be a bit more paranoid about protecting faster um, tracks and stuff like that by not, well, not protecting faster tracks, but by preventing people from using a faster method that you don't want to actually be a method available to people. 
So, like, from that standpoint, I definitely see why it's necessary, but at the same time. Chill out with the use of invisible blocks, map creators. Oh. I think it's shooting around to go in there. Back to camp. Ah, hit the side. Yeah. Well, and the other interesting thing to me about the fact that it's a map supposedly perfect purposely made for speedrunning is I don't feel like that works very well like just for map design in general because I feel like speedrunning in any game is kind of sprouts when you have stuff that maybe isn't made for speedrunning but can be used for speedrunning and then people you know enjoy it as is and want to play more of it so then as a result they you know start learning to speedrun it and do stuff like that and i also feel like that should have been where the secret area was at somewhere in that whole deal anyway yeah, because I haven't seen this before. At least I don't think I have. Uh, I probably... Ah, yeah, back there. There's invisible blocks in the way, though. Okay, so I did come around... Wait, no. What? I'm confused. Yeah, I think... I think I know what I did. I think I came around up here... Up here... Over... And then through to here, come up, and no, that's just the way to go forward. Never mind. I have no clue where that shortcut was at, but it was somewhere in this area. I feel like this would be the sort of map that if I really did want to speedrun it, I'd have to go in specifically to find the stuff. Oh, want me to <gasps> Are you kidding me? The checkpoint was... Oh, that's infuriating. But yeah, I, I'd have to go in specifically to find the shortcuts or make a creative version of the map to go through and scout it out ahead of time and just find them real quick. and Or look up a video or whatnot. Ba basically, through some method find out ahead of time where all the shortcuts are at and learn it first instead of just being able to come at it with the speedrun, which I guess is pretty normal, but still, like, it, it is weird to me that the map creator, like, the way he phrased the description sounded like he didn't want you to really play through the map casually. Like, like the way it was phrased was kind of like, you know, you can play through casually, but it's meant to be speed and stuff like that. And it's like your first playthrough of a parkour map are you is almost always going to be a casual playthrough. As with pretty much any game, you're not going to load up Minecraft for the first time having never played the game before or seen anything about it, and your first thing you're going to go do is go try and speedrun beating the dragon. It's just, you know, just not how those things work. You gotta play through a map casually first. So, like, just, just the phrasing for that stuff weirds me out. But once again, like, I don't, I don't know how the how the map creator's words sounded in his own head. Because sometimes with stuff like that, like, you, you phrase it a way where somebody reading it can easily misinterpret it as kind of being a bit rude, but you didn't mean it that way, right? And I know that there's been plenty of t times that I've had messages that I've, like, sent to a friend or whatever and then looked at again and been like that came off as insanely rude
food. So I definitely, you know, understand if that's the case, but I don't know. It definitely came off as if he expected people to be speedrunning the map even on their first try. Which is just weird to me. But I digress. Enough talking about that. I find that one problem I have is I spend too much time during parkour videos talking about the faults with stuff that the map creator's done. Which, to a degree, just comes from the standpoint of I've done a lot of um, parkour videos. And, you know, as you do more parkour, and frankly, as you do more of anything, it becomes easier to critique issues with it. And you'll be more likely to try to blame shortcomings on, like, say, the map instead of yourself, I find, at least. But yet, I say that, but also there's a lot of, like, um, like, people that claim that a map's impossible when it's really not because they don't know enough about the game and they blame not being able to make the jumps on the map so I mean I guess you know it goes both ways there's some things that you're less likely to complain about with this sort of stuff but there's some things that you're just more likely to it really just depends um, I want to jump over to that one don't I no, that was definitely not where I wanted to jump to. I hate these sort of vine parkour stuff. Mostly because I don't have a good feel for it. So I don't, you know, know what I'm doing 100% of the time with this sort of stuff. Rebalance, go again. Okay, so if I jump to this one. Can I make it to that one? Yes, just barely. Then I can fall over. Um, I take it I don't want to fall down there. Sorry, just hit my microphone with my keyboard. Do need to do that? Um, where would it even be to go up this way? I don't know. What? We're like stuck over the edge and there's these spawners but the game mode's in peaceful and I believe the rule said to leave it in peaceful so I take it we're supposed to jump onto the wall and climb up here yeah okay right, fine by me a bit weird but okay um ah whew What do you want to bet that the secret teleport is on top of one of these trees? Like over here or something. Yeah! Okay, that that just looked right. Uh, hot tourist destinations. Let's go. That's where I came from. It's not over that way, because that just circles around to here, right? Yeah. Oh, it's up here. Okay. I feel like this map's a good mix of, like, uh, kind of confusing on where to go, but not, like, infuriatingly so. Like, there's some maps that it's just like did the map creator even try to designate a path but this map's done a really good job so far of like um, making it possible to tell where you're supposed to go but at the same time making it where you're going to get it wrong sometimes
which I'm guessing was probably part of the map creator's idea to try and make it like speed runnable or whatever. I have no clue where I'm going. Ah, around here and <gasps> ah, bad timing. Okay, let's try this guy. These stair jumps are obnoxious, and because I don't fall immediately when I miss it, it makes it even more so. Okay, boom. Yeah. Down and around. Hey, what? Stinking two tiered weird system. Woo! Finally made it. Okay, this is probably the last section of the area. The blocks look so similar in situations like this. It's kind of annoying, but also like the right balance of, you know, kind of annoying, but not really to that point, which is kind of the same deal as the pathing to this map where it's like, you could get stuck on an area because you're confused, but you're not likely to end up in that situation. Like, yeah, one, one of those situations where it's more difficult to tell, but it's also a situation where it feels like if you were better at the game, you would be able to tell. Which I feel like is the trick to any good difficulty, is you always want it to be at a point where whatever the intended audience is will get a feeling when playing of... Um, Like, it's difficult, but if I was better, I could clearly be winning. Which I feel like is part of what makes, like, say, multiplayer games so, like, alluring. Just what makes multiplayer games so interesting to people is the deal with them is you can, since you're playing other players you always can feel within a point of if I was a bit better I would be able to beat these guys like it's pretty much always at that point or at the point of you know well because they're humans you know and it's very possible that I could also get to that point whereas when you're taking on something that isn't a human it's possible to deal with something you know impossible right like you could end up in a map that has no way out it could have a broken jump it could have um, NPCs that are so powerful that it's impossible to actually beat them where am I going what am I doing okay cool like this that's the path I want to yeah yeah So like, yeah, I think that's part of, I think I've kind of landed on part of the idea of why, you know, people really enjoy multiplayer games. And maybe I'm a bit off base on it. It's definitely possible. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, de it definitely seems like a possibility that I'm right about that. Something, you know, to think more about. Boom. Not bad. Just jump around like that. Stop messing with the jump that I keep failing. 
I still have PTSD when I see Endrods. I always think I'm gonna have to crouch in to land. In this end section, it, like, the one complaint I have is they didn't do a good job in making it feel like separate sections as you go up. So, like, it, it kind of feels like I'm just repeating the bottom portions again, which is kind of annoying. Are you serious? What a what a waste of time. I hate that when I jump in the wrong spot. I have to go all the way around here again. Okay. And I have to go up there to go around there again. I was probably close to a checkpoint too, based off of the amount up that was. Which is fine. Now, <gasps> I stinking did it again. Uh, okay, luckily it's not that far over. It's it's not as far as I thought. Okay, I didn't jump. That time I get to fall all the way back down. That's fine. Just breathe in, breathe out, and get it the next time, right? Exactly. Spend too much time stressing on past failures, you will struggle to get success. Or something like that, just phrased in a way that sounds a bit more philosophical. probably be ideal to just drop and end up at what there was no checkpoint through all that how close was I to a single checkpoint uh, but yeah. I don't know I find kind of the, the more philosophical speech kind of fun like I watch what's his name ambiguous amphibian sometimes just because he, the, the 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 way he does it is just kind of funny. There's something about it. Like, the way he finds philosophy in games like Pro Project Zomboid that really shouldn't have any philosophy is pretty great. Congratulations! 1392. Not a great time, but... I definitely could have slimmed it down even without any... Um, teleporters. I made a lot of dumb mistakes that were easily avoidable. But yeah. Anyway guys, I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Um, like, this, this, this is the point where you pull out the graph, but I'm too lazy to actually edit that in. So, um, only 20% of you are subscribed. Please subscribe. Okay. That was really cringy. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. No, that's that's it for that. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, God bless. Bye-bye.